Welcome to Stormwater Drainage Solutions. In today's video, we got a pretty big install here for you. So we're gonna be discharging the majority of this system to this retention pond out back. And we're gonna be using six inch SDR 35 as our main line. And we're gonna be using four inch SDR 35 for our laterals to connect into that six inch main line. Now we're actually gonna be connecting on both sides of these houses. We're gonna be doing all the gutter downspouts. Now we have six gutter downspouts in total on the back end that are gonna be going to the retention pond. And the last two gutter downspouts that are in the front of the house, those are gonna be discharging to the street. So those are gonna be on their own separate lines. Now we're also gonna be installing a closed French drain in between these two houses right here where the AC unit is because there is a good clay pan underneath the topsoil and that is holding a lot of water. We're also gonna include a vein of stone to go over to the AC drip line to catch all that water. Remember to give 811 a call before you do any excavation. That way they can come out and mark any utility lines that may be in the area. For our French drain, we're gonna be using the FDM high octane slotted drain pipe. This has perforations 360 degrees around the entire pipe, and this allows for max water and airflow. Now you can see how saturated the ground is here that it's holding water. The reason for this is because when the developers build these homes in Florida, they elevate the land with dirt and clay that comes out of retention ponds. By them elevating the land like this, it creates pockets of clay in between the homes and the backyards, and it makes it where water cannot percolate through the ground and make it into the subsoil. We're gonna start by laying our main line out on the ground and using it as a straight edge to cut the sod out and get a good straight line for our trench. Now notice how we have a four inch SDR pipe laying next to our six inch SDR pipe. This is gonna be discharging the French drain and we're gonna to wanna to discharge that downhill so that the French drain can't get backed up from the gutter downspout drains. In the process of digging our French drain trench, you can see just how much water is being held in this area. The trench is already starting to fill up with groundwater. Now all the dirt that comes out of this French drain trench is not going to be going back into the trench. Instead, we're going to be replacing it with stone. That way it creates a void in the ground that water is going to find and is going to be able to travel into and into our pipe to be able to get discharged. Now, as we continue to dig this trench, I'm going to go ahead and walk down it here and you're really going to see where the problem area is occurring, where the water is holding in the ground. Right about here is where that clay pan is. And as you can see, all the water that's gathering in that trench, it cannot penetrate through all that clay. You would have to go down a good five to probably 10 feet in order to get this water to discharge through all that clay and back into the native ground level before the developers changed it up. Whenever you're building a French drain, you wanna make sure that you use a good non-woven geotextile filter fabric. I don't care what kind of soil you're in. It doesn't matter if it's sand, if it's clay, if it's loamy soil, always make sure you use the filter fabric because no matter what type of soil you have, it's gonna slowly migrate into the stones and it's gonna clog the voids and water's not gonna be able to make it to the pipe. Now, you cannot just go to a big box store and buy any type of landscaping fabric. It doesn't work that way. You have to get a non-woven geotextile filter fabric. And ideally, you want a low ounce fabric, like a three ounce fabric. The higher the ounce, the thicker the fabric, the slower the infiltration rate is going to be. So the thicker fabrics are used for roadways and for areas that are going to have a lot of traffic. For a yard drain, French drain, you want to use a three ounce filter fabric. Now, to get this filter fabric, you need to go to a plumbing supply store or a waterworks store. Like I said, they don't sell it at big box stores. So if you get a landscaping fabric and you put that in expecting for that to work, you're going to be disappointed. To collect the water coming from the AC drip line, we're gonna be using a T-fitting to create a branch off of our French drain. Now, using a T-fitting in a French drain is okay because water is slowly rising in your trench and traveling the path of least resistance, which happens to be the pipe at the bottom of the trench. Now, you wanna use a Y-fitting anytime that water is gonna have head pressure. When water is gonna be flowing quickly through a pipe, you wanna use a Y-fitting. A gutter downspout drain, a catch basin, a channel drain, anything like that where the water's moving quickly 
and could be carrying debris, you want to use a Y fitting. Our French drain is going to be a enclosed system. No debris is going to be getting into the system, only water. So a T fitting for this application is okay. A good way to know if water is going to be draining in the proper direction in your trench, other than using a level, is to simply put water in the trench and make sure that it is flowing in the right direction. If water starts to get held up, as you can see is happening here, we're going to go ahead and just skim that bottom out some more until the water starts to flow in the direction we want. Now, when we start putting our pipes in, we are going to use a level on them. We're going to do that for every 10 foot section when working with PVC pipe. And as you can see, that groundwater is traveling underneath our pipes as well. Naturally, this is going to happen until we get everything buried and packed in. Once all the dirt is buried and packed in and the stone is around our French drain, that water will then travel the path of least resistance, which is going to be the pipe at the bottom of our French drain. Now we're going to be adapting from four inch to six inch. We're going to be using an adapter fitting for that. And we're also going to be putting a clean out T right at this point. That way you can access the four inch line and the six inch line with this clean out T. Now working with six inch is a whole nother animal compared to four inch. This pipe is stiff. You aren't bending this pipe at all. Your trenches have to be perfectly straight whenever you're working with this pipe and these fittings. Now what I'm holding here is a six by six by four inch Y. We're gonna be connecting our gutter downspouts to a four inch line, and that is gonna then connect and transfer into a six inch main line. Now, because we are picking up so much roof water on both of these houses, you're gonna to wanna to put all that water into a six inch main line. Now you could get away with probably three to four downspouts on a smaller sized roof on a four inch line, any more than that, though, it's going to overwhelm your system. And especially since we're going to have a French drain connected into our main line, we want to make sure that the water does not backflow into that French drain because that's going to make a problem worse. It's going to create a giant leach field then if water backs up into this system and starts to go into our French drain. So we want to make sure that we have enough area to handle large amounts of water, especially on heavy rain events. That is why we wanted to upgrade the main line to a six inch main so it can handle large volumes of water that these roofs are gonna pick up and put into this system. Now, a smaller roof, like I said, you could get away with a four inch pipe and you could keep probably about you know three to four downspouts on a four inch line. Any more than that, you want to upgrade the size of the pipe to be able to handle it. Now, as you can see, we got our stone and we're putting that in our French drain. None of that dirt is going to go back into our French drain. All that dirt is going to be hauled away. We're not putting any of that dirt back in that French drain. The dirt is the problem. You don't want to put the dirt back in. That's just going to create the same exact problem. You're going to want to fill that trench with stone and then seal up the French drain. You're going to stitch the geofabric up. Now, as you can see, we're making our way down with our six inch main and we have that four inch line that's going to be for the French drain right on the side of it. And we're going to tap that in a little bit further down the run. Now, working with PVC is a lot of work. So, you know, the videos make it look easy and quick, but let's go ahead and show you how long it takes. So hopefully that music didn't annoy you too much. I don't know why, but I enjoyed that music. So that's why I put it. But as you can see, that was sped up at least eight times. I sped that clip up. Just doing those two gutter downspouts to get them right in PVC 
that probably took us at least an hour roughly to get that correct. And there was parts of it that didn't even get filmed. I put the camera there and started filming it once we had the pieces cut and we kind of had an idea of how we were doing it. As you can see, we got our six inch main line all the way down to the lake and we're gonna give it a nice mitered cut to discharge it with a straight pipe going right into this retention pond. So we got the system fully installed, at least the back end system. Now, next we're gonna be working on the front, the two downspouts in the front, but that system, I'm gonna go ahead and just do a whole separate video for that, because this video is already getting pretty long here, and we still got a little bit to go. So we got the entire six inch main in, we went ahead and tapped in our French drain further down the run, that way it'll help on any kind of backflow. We got all of our downspouts, piped into this system. We also had the clean out in between the six inch main line and the four inch main line. And our French drain is full of stone and all that dirt is gonna be removed. And we're gonna go ahead and stitch up our French drain and put that sod back on top and clean up the mess. Now, the pipe is pretty shallow here and we did that on purpose because we wanted to make sure that we had enough fall going to the lake. But if we would have started too deep here, what would have ended up happening is we would have literally dug into the retention pond and we would have been in probably up to our knees in water in that retention pond. And that's going to hinder the system and not allow it to drain right. So we had to calibrate this and get it at the right depth everywhere so that the system would function. Now, I'm not worried about having this French drain pipe shallow here. This is FDM high octane drainage pipe. The wall thickness on this pipe is incredible. You can stand on it. You can jump up and down on it. It's not going to crush. You can drive lawnmowers over it. It's fine. It's going to also be surrounded in stone. That's also going to give it strength. So I'm not concerned about it. But as you can see, we're cleaning up now. We're getting all the sod put back into place. And we're slowly stitching our system up. Now, every French drain, we like to stitch these system ups like this. It's probably one of the best ways to do it. You can also use fabric pens. There's nothing wrong with doing it that way as well. But we like to stitch it up. That way we know each and every system that we did. And if anybody ever opens the system, more than likely we'll know about it if we ever have to go back to the job to do a repair or a maintenance on it or some kind of investigatory thing on it, we'll know if somebody opened our system up because the stitches will be broken and it'll be re-stitched or it'll be pinned with fabric pins. So that's one of the reasons we like to stitch our system up. So we got all the downspouts piped in, we got our French drain stitched up, we got the sod put back as best we could in that area because remember that area was a really mucky mess. So in a situation like that, it's not easy to put the sod back because when you try to cut it out, it comes out in like pieces. So we do our best to grade it out. And a lot of times we'll put grass seed down and straw or hay over it. That way the grass seed germinates and it grows and it'll take hold. But in a situation like this, the grass will grow back. You just have to give it a couple of months. But if you really want some kind of grass seed or anything, we will definitely do that. Now, I was able to make it back to this job in a rain event. Um, it was kind of towards the end of the rain event because chasing storms here in Florida is kind of, uh, it's a pain. 
but I do my best because I want to get rain footage for you guys at the end of these videos so you guys can actually see the systems in action. Trust me, I like seeing my own systems in action as well. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the outfall and see this water pouring out of it. All right, guys, well, that just about does it for this video. I hope you gained some knowledge from watching it. And I was pretty bummed out when I saw that our really nice mitered cut on our discharge pipe was broken off of there. I don't know if a lawnmower hit it or what exactly happened because this job was done months and months and months ago and I haven't been back out there since. So it'd be kind of weird that a lawnmower is getting that close to the retention pond, but I guess anything is possible. And they also put some like brown spray paint on there. So I guess they did that to try to like blend it into the side of the retention pond bank. I don't know, but in any case, it was draining very, very well. And that's all that matters. So remember we service the Tampa Bay area and surrounding counties. If you're in Hillsborough, Pasco, Pinellas, and Hernando County, Florida, and it's stormwater drainage related, we can handle it. Whether it's a full system install, a camera snaking, a jetting, a cleaning, or just maintenance, give us a call at 813-614-3456. We can come out there, we'll assess the situation, and we'll help figure out a solution. So until next time, this is SWDS signing off.